Now, as you've learned in my previous videos how proteins and enzymes work, I think it's appropriate to go into greater detail how they work together in the biochemical processes that take place in our cells. So then, let's talk about metabolism for a while. But wait a second, isn't this video about catabolic processes? Well, yes, but you see, the metabolism is the total turnover of substances in the body. The metabolism consists of all the catabolic processes, that is the breaking down of substances, mainly food, and the anabolic processes, that is building up new substances. The catabolic plus the anabolic processes together make up the metabolism. And in this video, I would like to give you an introduction to the catabolic processes. In the following videos, we'll go much deeper into them. The catabolic processes, they are mainly about breaking down or degrading the food that we eat. The food mainly consists of macromolecules, that is, gigantic molecules like starch, fat and proteins. They are broken down into simple, or at least simpler, molecules that can either be used for combustion, from which we get energy, or as building blocks for new macromolecules that the cell needs. For you to understand this, we must first have a look at the anatomy of the cell. This is a so-called eukaryotic cell, that is, a cell with a nucleus. If you've already studied biology, this is nothing new to you. This is how I draw a typical eukaryotic cell. It's enclosed by a cellular membrane in this way. And since it is a eukaryotic cell, it has a nucleus here. Between the nucleus and the cellular membrane, we find the cytoplasm, the intracellular fluid where all of the other cell components float around. And as you can see, there is plenty of stuff in the cell, and I don't think you need to copy them all to your notes. What we will focus extra on, however, is the mitochondrion, which I draw here. Quite often, at least in the biology courses, the mitochondrion is just called the cell's power plant. My intention in this and the following videos is now that you shall learn why that is so. Now I also want to show you an overview of the catabolic processes, and this figure I will return to many times. That's why I actually don't think you need to copy this to your notes either. Just follow along and watch and listen, and let me tell you what it shows. First of all, this represents what happens in the digestive tract, from the mouth to all the intestines. In the digestive tract, large carbohydrates, like for example starch, is broken down into simple carbohydrates, mainly glucose. And those monosaccharides that are not glucose are converted into glucose. Fats are broken down into glycerol and fatty acids, and proteins are broken down into amino acids. Everything is transported across the cellular membrane and into the cells in the body. Now we're in the cytoplasm, and here two interesting types of reactions take place, at least from a catabolic point of view. The first one is that every glucose molecule is cleaved into two molecules, or ions actually, called pyruvate. This is a process called glycolysis. Maybe you recognize this from the biology courses, or maybe this is completely new information for you. But before you say, I don't get anything of this stuff, just take it easy. This is just an overview, and in the following videos, I'll explain everything. Amino acids can go through a process called transamination in the cytoplasm. In short, transamination means that an amino group is transferred from an amino acid to a carboxylic acid so that a new amino acid forms. An amino acid may also be deaminated, which means that the amino group is completely removed from the amino acid. As you've probably guessed, I'll talk more about this in the following videos as well. From the cytoplasm, we now move into the mitochondrion. The pyruvate that was formed in the glycolysis is oxidized into a molecule called acetyl-CoA. In another process in the mitochondrion, so-called beta-oxidation, fatty acids are also broken down into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA may enter the citric acid cycle, where it is oxidized to carbon dioxide. Some carboxylic acids from the deamination processes may also go directly into the citric acid cycle. In the citric acid cycle, quite a lot of hydrogen and high-energy electrons are released. 
In the so-called electron transport chain, they are used to form water together with the oxygen that we breathe in. In this process, energy is released, energy that the mitochondrion stores in ATP molecules. Finally, let's write something about this too. In the digestive tract, the first breaking down of the food takes place. Large carbohydrates are broken down into simple carbohydrates, mainly glucose. Fats are broken down into fatty acids and proteins into amino acids. Then, in the cytoplasm, glucose is broken down into pyruvate in this process called glycolysis. Also in the cytoplasm, transaminations and deaminations of amino acids take place, yielding carboxylic acids and amines. Last of all, inside the mitochondrion, the pyruvate from the glycolysis is oxidized into acetyl-CoA, and from the beta-oxidation of fatty acids, acetyl-CoA is also formed. In the mitochondrion, the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain also take place, in which the energy from the oxidation reactions is converted into ATP. Now, as I said, I think here were quite a few new concepts and processes that were completely new to you. But don't you worry about that. This was only an overview, to which I will return plenty of times, and I will lead you safe and sound through all these processes in the following videos. And, as always, don't forget that you can learn more and check your learning on my homepage. You'll find a link in the description.